All right, hopefully everybody can hear us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you want to start the meeting, the microphone is on. Okay. We'll call this meeting to order as of 10.40. Was this meeting properly noticed? Yes, it was. Maybe we have a roll call of numbers present. Ben Kowski here. Robert? Kraus. Robert Caldwell. Caldwell. Three members present. We have a quorum. Would you all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I need a motion to approve the agenda as written. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Any additions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> we need approval of amendments as written. I need a motion. I motion to approve those I'll second that. Okay. Any uh, deletions or additions? If not, all in, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. We will, <coughs> having that done, we will move on to the public hearings. The first application, it's um, America and Anita Biernat tabled from October meeting. It's a special exception request under section 405.12c of the Adams County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance to build an accessory building without a primary residence on property located in the Northwest Corridor, Southeast Corridor, Section 18, Town 19 North, Range 5 East, Lot 8, CSM 5532, Town of Monroe and Adams County. Um, I, the applicant still has not gone to the town, uh, so I'd entertain a motion to, or request you guys motion to table it indefinitely until we hear from them. All in favor? Aye. 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 Request. Please take the five as any aye. Aye. Motion carried. Sorry. Next item. The next application is for Kevin and Beth Kaminsky. Um, we are withdrawing that application at their request. Uh, so we can kind of just move on from that. Okay, now we move on to. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Having a um, when you guys are talking, make sure you're talking loud because this is picking up all the sound. Okay. And somebody said they were having a little bit of a issue. <clears throat> I will do what I can, Dave. The next application. Pete and Will Cabin LLC, tabled from the October meeting. It's a special exception request under section 39630A1 of the Adams County Shoreline Wetland and Habitat Protection Ordinance to allow filling and grading, and a variance request under section 40534E3 of the Adams County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance and 39660A, paragraphs three and seven of the Adams County Shoreline Wetland and Habitat Protection Ordinance for reduced setbacks to the ordinary high watermark and to a town road and also excavating and grading on a slope of steeper, on a slope steeper than 20% on property located in the so Southeast quarter, Southwest quarter, section five, town 19 North range five East, town of Monroe, Adams County. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do at the request of the board, uh, you guys wanted to see a video of it. So I'm going to share my screen as soon as Janine lets me share my screen. That should be where's me. Oh, 
Um, uh, I don't know why. We'll get there. Sure, sure. So here's a video of the property looking to the north. The blue-ish green cabin is the subject property. This is the first cabin in the line of about four or five that's there. The road continues down just to the right and then it does dead end. And that is the, the subject property there. And now this is on the lake side. You can see the, I'm standing right at the drop off down to the lake. And I believe that pink flag there on the left is the property line. Nobody should be talking. All right, and then we did receive uh, new maps. Those were included in on the agenda. Just going to look for, we did take a couple of them and blow them up even further. Now uh, we do have one. 
there. And just looking for, so the town of Quincy did not object to this request. Um, they oh, thought no. there, there was no building in the vision triangle. No, this is for, that's for the next one. Sorry, ignore that part. The town of Monroe did not object to this. Um, they did request that they angle the porch to give it a 33 foot road setback, which they would have to be out of the road right away. Uh, then we did also receive a letter from Mark and Ann Frederick. And I believe I read that at the last meeting. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I did? No. All right. Nope. I would like to start out by quoting from the Adams County Variance application. I'm not doing this to remind the board what their duties entail, but to inform all those who have never applied for a variance. What the application states and why is important the rules are followed. Overview. The Board of Adjustment is known as a quasi-judicial body because its functions almost like a court. Its decisions must comply with specific criteria provided in Wisconsin state statutes. The Board of Adjustment must apply county ordinance provisions as they are written. Its job is not to compromise for a property owner's convenience, but to apply appropriate legal standards to a specific fact situation. Variances are meant to be an infrequent remedy where an ordinance imposes a unique and substantial burden. Next is the three-step test. To qualify for a variance, one must meet the following three requirements. Strict application of an ordinance requirement will result in an unnecessary hardship described as follows. A situation where in the absence of a variance, an owner can make no feasible use of their property or strict conformity is unnecessarily burdensome. The hardship of difficulty must be peculiar to the parcel in question and different from that of other parcels, not one that affects parcels similarly. Loss of profit, profit or financial hardship is not in and it's of itself of grounds for a variance, nor is a self-imposed hardship grounds for a variance. My comments to step one, the current owners state they bought this property in 2011. If that is the case, they have been making use of the property for 10 years. I believe that it has been family owned much longer than that. This parcel also is no different than the three adjoining parcels. All show the same setbacks and steep slopes to the lake. Two of the, th two of the three have made improvements while staying within the original footprint. A hardship must be due to unique physical limitations of the property. I.e. Com compliance with the ordinance is prevented by limitations of the property, steep slopes, wetlands, et cetera, which are not generally shared by other properties. Previous variances do not provide a basis for granting a variance. You'll be asked to demonstrate that alternate project design or locations on this parcel which comply with the ordinance are not feasible. My comments to step two. Again, the adjoining three parcels also have the setbacks and steep slope. Two adjoining parcels stayed within their original footprint while making improvements. Peton, well, Cab, and LLC could do the same. Number three, a variance may not be granted which results in harm to public interest. In applying this test, the board must consider the public interest factors listed as objectives in the purpose of statement of the ordinance. My comments to step three. I would like to highlight several stat state statutes starting with NR 115.051G, which states lateral expansions are limited to a maximum of 200 square feet over the life of the structure. No portion of the expansion may be any closer to the ordinary high watermark than the closest point of the existing principal structure. I do not have square foot figures for the existing structure, but looking at the proposal, if the new main structure remains the same size as the old one, adding the garage and porch look like about an additional thousand square feet. Far exceeding the allowed 200. Also, the garage and porch are being built within the street setback, making a non-conforming structure even more so. 11505L E to amp impervious surface. Standards for highly developed shorelines, 30% for residential land use. The proposal states that the proposal states what looks added a stormwater basin. Hard surface is hard surface. I'm trying to figure out how a depression in the ground reduces impervious surface. Since our property is not far away and approximately nine feet down slope, I am greatly concerned as to how they are going to control runoff. If they can somehow get all the water from the large amount of impervious surface to the stormwater basin, by my calculations, it doesn't have the capacity to hold even a one inch rainfall. What's going to happen when there is a rain of more than an inch? The way I see it, the water will overflow the banks of the retaining pond on its way down to the lake through the 35 foot wide, 10 foot deep trench they want to dig 
into the 35 foot shoreline buffer zone or through the neighboring properties. The purpose of the shoreline buffer is to one, stabilize the shoreline and help prevent runoff pollution from entering the waterway. Two, provide habitat for fish, birds, and other wildlife. Three, normalize air and water temperature extremes in near shore areas and within stream corridors, resulting in improved aquatic habitat. Four, preserve a naturally beautiful shoreline. I am not sure where excavating a 35 foot wide, 10 foot deep trench just so they can have a walkout basement does any of the above. If anything, it goes against the entire purpose. Thank you for allowing us to voice our concerns and objections to the variance request. Uh, I also received correspondence from Larry Koopman. He is the engineer on this um, project. Uh, he submitted the town participation form. I've also attached a sketch of the modification of the front porch. Um, that was requested by the town. They struck the board struggled with a zero foot street setback and requested the porch modification to create a two foot street setback. The lot to the south has a one street setback, one foot street setback. I attached the sketch because the written description of the town participation form doesn't match what Bob Kissinger sketched on the site plan and discussed with me and the other board members. It should have said two foot street setback from the property line or 35 foot setback from the center line of right away. Uh, the town had no concerns with setback from the water. The only concerns about the excavation on the steep slope was from a neighbor who wanted the confirmation that the excavation would result in more stormwater runoff to his property. That's not even possible from the excavation. Um, I received a Email from Jeff and Tracy Lipinski. I regret we didn't attend the Zoom call in 10-4 because the letter made it seem like they just wanted permission to upgrade the shoreline, just like Mark and Ann Frederick did a few doors down. Their project really enhanced the shoreline. I found out it was more than that, so I'd like to add some comments. Dustin, this is Jeff. Yep. I don't know if you hear me. Yep, I just saw the... So, I saw so, that. The problem is, is it is submitted. Okay, that's fine. Because in okay. addition to kind of uh, all the environmental impacts that you know Mark and Ann have outlined here, I guess you know from Tracy and my perspective, being full-time residents here, and that this property basically is kind of an island unto itself, surrounded by our um, neighborhood. Okay, so uh, we'll have a chance to comment. Okay. But I I have to read through the correspondence first. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, in 2010, we bought our cabin. And it also bought the land behind it. We were down the street from this cabin on 18th Lane. We had looked at houses on this block and decided it wasn't roomy enough. Plus, we were worried about erosion issues and restrictions to expand. My point is that you don't buy a sliver of land and then expect to change the rules that everyone has to follow. We can't even change our view shed or cut down mature trees in front of our cabin because of the power company rules. This construction looks like it would eliminate any many mature trees that could help prevent erosion. Um, that has no bearing on it. It's my understanding that current building structures on that property already violate current regulations that govern the amount of square footage of building to open air land. We know someone in the area that had to reduce their deck due to these restrictions. The neighborhood is concerned about traffic and available parking. There is no on-street parking in front of these cabins. We don't think this is an improvement to our neighborhood. And they did want to make sure that that is from him personally, not in any professional cap capacity he may have. Uh, I received correspondence from John Rudd. Rude. Uh, the other day I had called the office and after speaking with one of the inspectors, I was under the impression that the variance was for some riparian work and not much else. I was not directed to the website and supporting information. I had verbally stated I had no opposition to what I thought was only to be what is outlined above. After someone outside the office directed me to the calendar and seeing what was proposed, I'm going to rescind my approval. I will review the proposed changes in more detail, but after a quick perusal, I'm quite concerned not only about the integrity of my lot, but also my drain field is in relatively close proximity. I will review this further, but at this point in time cannot approve. 
I'm also concerned that it may become a rental, which I would be opposed to. I will try to be on the Zoom meeting. I was wondering if I could extend attendance to my immediate family if they wish to attend. I received another piece of correspondence from Mark and Ann Frederick. On 10-3, my wife and I attempted to join the Zoom meeting. We would like to like it to be known we do not support their proposal. The drawing drawings provided were totally unreadable. We are wondering when there is going to be a public hearing so we can express our concerns. I believe that is all the correspondence I have. All you. Okay, before we turn this over to the public input, I want the board members to realize this whole thing is not emotional or intimidating. It's your vote to follow the three criteria are set by the state. And you have to prove unnecessary hardship. You have to prove conditions unique to this property that's preventing full use. And you have to prove no hardship, no, excuse me, no harm to public interest, okay? I have three comments to make on this. Number one, there is no evidence of hardship. I took upon myself to drive to the property, do an inspection, take the pictures that I have here to prove my point. Everyone at that location shares the same waterfront, the same steep drop off, the same stairs. So that's not unique to this property. That one guy says okay. he still can't hear. The other thing is, there is no hardship. They've been using this property for 10 years. And the last thing is, public interest. I don't allow, no, if allowing this to go through, and cutting down 18 mature spaces. Moving a house with a footprint from 1,200 square feet to 2,000, moving it four feet off the right of way does not harm the public interest. And our duty as the Board of Adjustment, and it's clearly spelled out. We must consider all short-term, long-term, and commutative, long commutative impacts, excuse me, I'm talking about Biden, impacts <laughs> on zoning variants that are requested. So your duty is clear. Does this request meet any of this criteria? It's up to you to draw the conclusion and make the motion. So I'd I'll like turn it over to public. You wanted public input? You want it? Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Did you have some input? Yeah, I have some input too. You gotta speak up, Bob. Yeah, uh, make sure everybody's talking loud. Yeah, Bob Caldwell here. I have some input. And I've gone over the details of this. I've probably spent more time than normal because I'm getting the impression that this is a matter of, and this is Bob speaking here, I think it's a matter of bullying. I don't like it. Uh, I've read the correspondence and I'd like to read one here to Dustin Grant from Koopman and Associates, and they're attaching some information and they're talking about it. And he says, both beating, his words are, both are pretty ugly 
in terms of meeting setbacks. And that's, that's his impression. That's my impression also. And they're talking about, Copeland says, oh, the water's not going to run off on the neighbor. It can't do that because of the topography. Well, where is the water going to go? Right down that channel into the lake. Another aspect that I'm familiar with, and that's these permeable pavers and bricks and that sort of thing. When the ground freezes, the water runs right off the top of it. And when those pavers and riprap gets filled up with leaves and sand and clay, they don't work anymore. Uh, I, I think I'd like to do some speaking later, if I might. You're a board member. You can speak whenever you want. The important thing here is to remember what guides this board. And it's the three standards set by the state. Hardship, conditions, impact on public interest. I'm assuming this is a teardown. Yeah, the one drawing that reblow or that blown up one, if you look in there, it does show the existing cabin in relation to the proposed. Yeah. I don't that property isn't con it's not conducive to this project. That home is too big from the size of the lot. And then drop off to excavate that. It's just unbelievable. How, how much dirt would they have to move? I, I just do not see this as a feasible project. Uh, the drawing does show 251 cubic yards. I do not believe that lot is conducive to the size of that home. My my notes here are Bob. This is a tiny, tiny lot, a big house. So we're 3,000 square feet. May, you, may I inject something here? Dustin had in his video a picture of the front of the house. Now, in your mind, you have to draw a picture that you're going to have a hole at the front of that house 10 feet deep. 30 some feet wide, pitching down a, a little over a foot, or I think it's a little over a foot to the lake. I could see him building steps. Well, they do have, I have a picture of the stairs they have, but all the property there has stairs. Stairs are a permitted structure. None, none of them have any excavation. The only one who has an improved shore is the very ho the house on the very end. They did, down at the lake, they put rocks in in a short area, maybe five feet wide, that's accessible by foot. That's it. Nobody else has cut the bank. Nobody else has said that we can't use our property because of the, you know, because of the steps. On the <clears throat> it's not a condition that's unique to this property alone. No, I agree with you, but I just don't think it's conducive to the property. It's um, one thought on that, though. The unique to that property, the harm to public interest, and the unnecessary hardship are only applying to the variance portion. Right. The excavation of the walkout is a special exception. Those criteria do not apply. I'm not citing it. I'm just saying, okay, this is what you're going to end up with. Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure that everybody okay. understood there's two sets of criteria. Can I reiterate, you're taking a 1,100 some square foot house and you're replacing it with a 2,000 square foot house and you're replacing it with something that has the second story, not just the first floor, read your blueprint. It has a second story. Okay. The house is alongside. I believe do have one of them does have a second story. 
in the house at the very end, which I have a picture of right here, is the one that did the 200 square foot legal addition. Okay. I'm still working on it. It's, He's got a camper park to the front yard with a. Uh, uh are we able to just? Are we able to? Hold on one second. Why is it going to be good? I do not know. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, can I say something? My name is Kate Shields. Oh, okay. Yeah, hold on one second. We were getting some bad feedback here. Yeah, I think we did. it. Oh, okay. Go ahead and try. I don't hear it now. So, so. Um, so I what was your question? I, I, would, I would just like to make a couple of comments. Um, I'm, uh, my husband and I are one of the property owners there. And I just want to make sure that the board understands that this property has been in our family well over 50 years. It hasn't been 10 years. Originally, my parents bought it with Family. Um, that family was bought out. Um, they needed to exit. And um, my parents gifted it to myself and to my brother. So that property has been in the family. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to put mine on mute. You open yours up. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Could you start that over? They didn't know they were, you were talking to them. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. How's that? Much better. Your speaker up to now. I'm out. I can't. Okay, um, so can you can someone wave if you can hear me? Okay, we're thank good. You. My name is Kate Schild, and I'm one of the members, uh, one of the families with Pete and Well um, Cabin. And I just wanted to emphasize to the board that this cabin has been in my family for over 50 years. It originally was bought from, uh, by my parents and another family. Um, about that 10 year mark is when another family was no longer able to, um, the second family couldn't keep it up. So um, myself, uh, my family, my husband and I, and three of my brothers and their families, it was gifted by my parents. So that's the story behind that. Um, the intent of this property it, it's, um, we, um, the cabin is in a state where we need to replace it. Um, and, and so our intent is, my understanding is we're not adding any, we're using the same footprint. Yes, we're moving it. And instead of a shed, we're adding a garage, uh, mainly for safety reasons, because my father, um, who is older, would still like to visit and in the winter, and we've got family members with arthritis. And so that would be very um, beneficial to us to have an attached garage. And that would be replaced with the shed that's on the property. Um, someone raised a concern about rental. That is not our intent at all. We do, it is myself and um, my brothers and we do have families and we do have grandchildren. Will they visit the cottage? Yes, in a very positive way. Um, there's no plans for rental whatsoever. This is a family cabin. Um, we love the place. We'd like to stay there. Um, we've got a lot of memories there. And so um, the walkout, uh, uh, yeah, it's different, but our intent is to preserve the area as much as possible. And Larry and his team has, uh, will use those engineers to make sure that there's no problem with water runoff and, and all that type of thing. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because there seemed to be some um, issues on that. And my husband might want to say something else. 
Well, and, and uh, to talk about the trees, yes, we're going to be taking some trees down, but uh, to be truthful, five or six, a handful of those are dead and they have to come down anyway. Um, so yes, there'll be a few other trees that'll come down, but a lot of the that you'll see right there now are already dead. Just want to make that clear. Thank you. All right, you I, re I reiterate again, we do not legislate or re give variance requests emotionally. It's done strictly by the letter of the law and specifically outlined for us. If everything on this property falls within this criteria, then we need a motion to approve. If you feel it doesn't fall into this criteria, and we need a motion to disapprove. But we do have to do public participation first. Right, yeah. right. I mean, the reason I brought this up is I understand it's a family thing. It's emotional. This has no bearing. May, would you continue with the public input, please? Yep. Uh, at this time, we'll open the hearing up to uh, public, anybody who would, wishes to speak in favor of the request, uh, please state your name. You are limited to three minutes. Anybody else? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Larry. Larry Cooper. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Dustin, I uh, just wanted to respond to a, a couple of things. First of all, uh, the overall size of the proposed new home and the porch and the attached garage is an increase in square footage over what the existing home footprint plus the detached shed are. And all of those square footages are on the plan. The first floor footprint of the proposed home is actually slightly smaller than the footprint of the existing home. And, and both those numbers are on the plan. Um, you know, the, uh, understand that they're allowed to rebuild in the foot, same footprint and that we are requesting variances from the water and the shoreline. Uh, but we show a, a triangular area, uh, the 62 foot setback we're showing on the water side, that question came up at the last meeting and, and I couldn't remember where that came from, but that comes from setback averaging. So instead of the normal 75 feet, the 62 feet would be what's allowed for a shoreline setback. But when you add to that the uh, setback from the street, then both of these setbacks came after this lot was created. So understand, you know, there's, there's a home on there. It doesn't meet the setback from the water, and it doesn't met, meet the setback from the streets, and neither do the two current homes that are north and south of this property. So when, when I made the comment in early on, when you first uh, uh, said that applying for these variances and the special exep exception were an option, and you uh, kind of encouraged us to proceed on, on that basis. But uh, those setbacks all came to being after this home was there. But yeah, when I said the setbacks are ugly, I'm thinking, you know, no, nothing meets the setbacks. I didn't mean it in a derogatory manner or a bullying manner, that's for sure. It's just what it is. And you know, we surveyed those homes in, and uh, neither of the neighboring homes meet either the setback from the street or the setback from the water. Um, I guess uh, my last thing, my last thing, did those full-size blueprints that I shipped down to you get distributed to the... Uh, Board of Adjustment members. I certainly apologize for not realizing that uh, these weren't being shared in a PDF format where they could be blown up or, or that people were viewing eight and a half by 11 copies of plans that were meant to be at the smallest 11 by 17, but 22 by 32 full size. So I, I apologize for yep. uh, that part of our first meeting. We did, we did receive those. One of the board members does have a question for you, Larry. Yeah, this is Larry Koopman. Yes, yes, yes it is. I just want to ask Larry if 
you did write that correspondence to Dustin on July the 23rd? Were you saying that the setback, both of the setbacks are pretty ugly? You just said that. You just explained why you said that. Okay. The answer is yes. Yeah, you just, yeah, he just talked about that. Dustin, and would you like me to read Dash triangle on this drawing? I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. yeah I You're just referring to that you couldn't need it. Well, it certainly leaves. Yeah. Are there, are there any other members of the public that have, uh, are in favor of this? Any other members of the public in favor? Uh, to answer the question in the chat, we are in the public hearing and I will ask for people to speak. Uh, at this time, we'll do uh, open the public hearing or move on to the people who are opposed. Again, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Um, my name is David Iwanowski, and my wife and I are the owners of the adjacent property to the north at 771 18th Lane, uh, which has <clears throat> been in my wife's family since the early 1970s as well. And it was uh, always understood that there were limitations on these lots. And uh, I think Mark and, and Frederick pretty uh, succinctly explain what those were. We're quite frankly, we're glad to see that the property to the south of us is getting attention. It's been uh, neglected for a number of years, uh, but we also understand uh, on our lot, as well as our neighbors, that there are some limitations. Uh, we're on small lots, we're on the water, we're adjacent to public roads, but there are reasons why the county and the state has restrictions on building in those situations. So we really encourage uh, Andy and his family to, uh, to improve their property. We hope they continue to enjoy it and, uh, as we do with lots of family memories. But just to be clear, we went through a very lengthy process to modify our family cottage a number of years ago and we're able to work within the guidelines of building within the same footprint, which wasn't easy. It wasn't our first choice, but quite frankly, we felt it was the right thing to do. So when we look at this proposal between the number of trees that are being removed, the, uh, the, the impervious areas and how that's being handled, uh, quite frankly, drainage, which we think will, uh, at least some of it will come to the north to our property. Uh, the relationship between septic and wells, we have a, a holding tank on the south side of our property, but most importantly, the severe cutting at the shoreline for an exposed basement. So uh, we do object and, and uh, just to be clear, we really encourage the owners to maintain and enjoy their property, but I think um, my opinion, our opinion is this is the wrong, wrong proposed project for this site. Um, so we would request that the, uh, the variance be denied. Also, one other thing, uh, I, I don't think it's uh, the intent to um, distribute uh, drawings and whatnot that we didn't have a chance to review. So I, I think uh, if we can get copies of those, we can provide some, some further input, but nothing that was online was, was legible. So um, again, uh, we, we, encourage the, the use of the property and, and would welcome uh, our, our neighbors to the south, but with a different solution. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak in opposition to this request? Any other members of the public that wish to speak in opposition to this request? Third time, any other members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Dustin, this is Jeff Lipinski again. Um, you know, what I had kind of mentioned earlier was concern, you know, from a, from a neighborhood perspective 
possible possibility of traffic, rental, that kind of piece there. But you know, just kind of listening with Dave's comment there and Mark and Ann's comment, you know, I think it's kind of unfair that you know they were following all the rules and regulations and now it's it's kind of being kind of opened. And I, and I don't feel like that's fair to the, their residents there. So again, another reason why, you know, we're not in agreement with it, so. Any other members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Dustin, um, Doug and I would like to speak. We are um, on the board for the Homeowners Association that's located across the street, Pete and Will Landing. And, um, you know, our concern is that is a quiet area, a narrow road. There's a lot of foot traffic primarily on that road right now. And also our association, there are lots above, directly across, but above this property. So um, those lots are, were purchased with the views in mind. I don't know if this would have any impact on that at all. I haven't looked at it that closely, but um, it would kind of change the complexion of those lots along there as they look out. Um, and the parking is another, you know, concern because the road isn't a standard width road. I mean, it's, you have a hard time getting two cars side by side passing each other right now. So um, the parking is another, I guess, concern that we have from a safety issue because of how often it's, it's walked right now. So um, in fact, the power company trail comes out pretty close to directly across um, from there. So that's all I was going to say. Thank you. This is Anna Peekler. Um, Kathy Weber and I, we own the house on 1897 Badger Court. Uh, we have a view of John Rood's uh, property, which is the property to the south of the intended project. For six years, we have watched the, um, the horizon across the street. Uh, we have seen trees go down that side, that slope of John's yard, particularly a willow tree. So there is natural erosion already incurring. If you approve this and have a walkout basement dug out, I firmly believe that you are going to have a huge erosion problem with that property and ergo the, all the other properties to the north of that. And that's all we have to say. I've already talked to Dustin on the phone. Uh, you know, if they're saying it's not going to be a rental property, I'm not going to pursue it. But I'm, I'm just saying the erosion factor, the natural environment, it's already occurring. We've, we've watched that tree go down every year. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to this request? Any other members wishing to speak in opposition to this request? Third and final time. Any members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to this request? Mr. Chairman, the public comment portion is closed. Uh, normally we do allow the applicant to respond to any of the comments made by the public. At this time, if somebody, one of the representatives from Pete Wall Cabin would like to address any of the concerns if you choose. Concern. Um, well, uh, we we stated a lot of things, um, but um, I guess the only the only thing is is, um, I mean we've hired people for so there is no erosion issue. Um, we've hired engineers and um, so that that's not a problem. Um, the views, I, I I mean I don't know how to comment on that because that, uh, um, I, I mean, that that's out of their control. It's out, I mean, that's things, um, the view who knows could be better. Um, anyway, I think we stated, uh, we addressed the people's concerns. 
Um, but I hope that um, that would be taken into consideration and uh, approved. I mean, yes, it's a bigger house for the smaller first floor footprint. Um, so, um, and we would like a garage and not a shed. So um, I guess that's all we have to say. Dustin, this is Larry Koopman again. Um, you know, I just wanted to speak to the erosion concerns if I could. Uh, you know, our plans show that uh, that excavation, the sides of that would be uh, stabilized with uh, the Enviro viral lock uh, retaining wall system. This is a natural vegetated wall system that's approved by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for this type of application along the shoreline. Uh, it's my opinion that the only water that's gonna flow down through this excavation would be the water that falls directly within that area. That would be the slopes of the Enviro lock walls uh, as, as well as the flat area from the walkout. Uh, there was some mention made of permeable pavers before. Uh, this plan doesn't incorporate or isn't relying on any uh, permeable pavers of any type. So the, uh, the bottom area would be well stabilized with uh, turf grass, and then you'd have the vegetated slopes going up to the existing grade. And as far as uh, there are two proposed stormwater basins that we're showing on the would be the northwest corner of the uh, area above the steep slope and the southwest corner. And there is uh, a formula within NR115 that talks about reducing impervious area um, by providing 0.375 cubic feet of stormwater runoff storage for each square foot of impervious area that you want to reduce to get the project within the, uh, uh, under the 30% the standard required by NR115. So this, this site does meet that standard. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it is. I'd like to ask you, you a question. Has uh, Land and Water Conservation Department been informed of the intending plans? We do not inform them ahead of time, but during the construction process, they will be involved because they will need an erosion control plan. Okay, because uh, the reason I ask anything we do on our like concerning the shoreline has to be approved by them. Not generally. Yeah. Well, I can request and now it's all the same department. Um, so some of that will be changing, but we, we can issue permits without the approval of land and water, but in a situation like this, during the permitting process, a, a lot of the questions or things that have come up are handled through the permitting process. And it's not necessarily anything this board has to be concerned with. Um, for example, there was some discussion about rentals. Those are allowed on every property in the state of Wisconsin where a house is allowed. Um, from a state and county standpoint anyway. Uh, as far as impervious surface standards, the application isn't for a variance to any of those standards. They still, has to, they still have to meet the exact same standards as every other shore, uh, shoreline property. Um, same with lot coverage, anything else they didn't apply for a variance for. Uh, as far as when they cut this out, uh, one of the members of land and water will be reviewing that plan. Um, Mr. Koopman has had has worked with land and water before and he is aware of you know what they look for. Okay. So gentlemen have you heard enough information at this time? Would, would somebody like to make a motion whether to approve or deny? Yeah I'd like to make a motion. Okay. And, and this motion is made with <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion. I don't want to 
have it come across personal and this board does really take this job seriously and we have laws that we must abide by we have opposing viewpoints and we try to stay within these guidelines as best we can there's always someone who feels they got the short end of the stick and we're genuinely apologetic for that. My motion is to deny the total request in its entirety as it's submitted, both variance and special exception. Uh, the reasons being many and uh, they're on record at this point. Do I have a second? I will second that motion. The motion has been made and seconded to deny this request. Is there any further input? Hearing now, I request a vote. Member vote, please. Bankowski? Uh, yes. Krause? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Okay. Motion granted. Motion to deny. To deny granted. I should have the, said that. Yes, I'm sorry. The application, both the variance and the special exception, uh, were denied three to zero, just in case you didn't hear the vote or the roll call vote. The next application is for is for Donald Kirschbaum and Jan. My apologies, Eckler. Kirschbaum, special exception permit request under section 39661A to allow a single wide manufactured home to be placed on a to be placed and a variance request under section 39660A3 of the Shoreland Wetland and Habitat Protection Ordinance to allow reduced front setbacks for two town roads on a corner lot on property located in the southeast quarter, northwest quarter, section 18, town 17 north, range 5 east. Town of Quincy, Adams County, Wisconsin. Uh, the applicant has a, as stated, has a corner lot. Uh, they wish to put on a, a manufactured home and they will not meet the setbacks. You do have the drawings showing where they're proposing to do that. I did receive a correspondence from the town of Quincy that they do not object. Uh, they're suggesting or use 30 foot from the lot lines on both Olmstead and Rideau versus the 63 feet from the center line of the road. It is in the Delwood subdivision where the roadways are uh, instead of 66 foot wide, they're 25 foot. Most of them are 25 foot wide. Uh, the town does have their own zoning and in the rest of Delwood, the proposed location request would, my understanding would comply with their ordinance, with the town ordinance. Um, but this property does happen to follow the feet of a um, thousand feet of the lake. So they fall under shoreline zoning, which has a different requirement than the town of Quincy does. And, and I don't believe I received any other correspondence. Oh, sorry, the neighbor on the town road called in and they do approve of the request. Uh, the applicant did also submit a letter. It's the answer to the three questions on the application. I believe you have that. Yep. Number one, unnecessary hardship is present because strict conformity to the ordinance is restricting us from selecting and positioning the most desirable and affordable option for a residential structure on this property. This is creating an unnecessary burden on us financial and is limiting our choice on how to best use the land. The hardship is a result of this being a corner lot, which needs to meet the two front yard requirements versus one. The whichever measures furthest into the lot requirement for setbacks to 63 feet from the center line or 30 feet from lot line for two sides of the lot is restricting the choice of a residential structure that needs to conform to the square footage minimum requirements, thus creating the hardship. In addition, Quincy Town 
ship building codes appear to differ from Adams County zoning requirements, creating confusion to us, the parcel owners, when originally requesting information on setback requirements prior to purchasing the property in early 2021. Compliance with the ordinance is prevented because the unique physical limitation for this property that is preventing us from compliance with the ordinance is that it is a corner lot and therefore it has two roadway restrictions that must be adhered to, adhered to. This limits placement of a residential structure on the lot. A variance will not be contrary to the public interest because other homes and structures surrounding this lot currently do not adhere to the currently defined setback requirements. Neighbors to the west and south infringe on the 10 foot accessory building zoning requirements. Neighbor to the north on Rideau Ave do not appear to meet the Olmstead 63 foot setback. In, in summary, our structure placement request is not significantly different than from the surrounding properties. And that is all the correspondence I did receive. Uh, would the applicant like to add anything that I missed or? Does anybody have any questions that they would like answered? have a real good feel for that area. I'll ask Dustin a question. If, if this variance, from what I've seen of that area, doesn't seem like it's out of the ordinary as far as setbacks in the community. Correct. Um, let me bring up that property. And you can get, and I mean, then you can kind of look at it. Um, All right, so the property in question is. This one. You can see that good. I can't zoom in any further. So this lot here is the is the applicant's property. There are right across the road. The green lines are approximately the property lines. They are they can be off up to thirty feet, thirty to fifty feet. Uh, it does appear that they are shifted over a little bit. I see other ones there that have the the houses, you know, kind of off to the corner. What is that to the left on that picture, Dusty? Brown or whatever? Is that lake? That's uh, Castle Rock. Okay. It's supposed to be blue. Uh, yellow is floodplain. Well, okay. Okay. I guess it's more black than anything, but yeah, that's what the aerial photos look like. Um, and the shoreland zoning ordinance applies to the extent of that yellow. So their property is approximately 400 feet from the lake. Uh, once you get beyond that yellow, then it would be completely up to the town ordinance. And as I said, they can, they don't have that center line setback. It's more the 30 foot from the road. They really, they couldn't put a home on there if they wanted to. Um, well, let me share again here. Maybe. It would be very difficult to meet your- So the lot itself, I don't know if the, I think the dimensions are on there, but if you actually count from the center of the road, into their property, they have about 142 feet where you would be taking 63 off from the center. That leaves you about 80. And then you have to be 30. Uh, 10 foot from 30 feet from the rear. And that so that leaves you about a 50 foot building envelope. And that's the east west way. North south, you're approximately. Right, and that, so I'm doing the other direction here. 
63, that leaves 70, 30. You sh approximately a 40 by 50 building envelope. Um, that is real rough off this drawing, but so, I mean, it's definitely tight. No doubt about that. I will say, um, this is Jan Eckler Kirschbaum, and you said the name perfectly, Dustin. Um, oh. <laughs> you get a star. <laughs> um, when we were looking to purchase property in this area, which started in 2020, um, we did call Quincy, and unfortunately, nobody told us it was in the shoreline. So we were working off the township. 25 foot setback from the lot line. So this year when we had um, the uh, individual come out to do septic and well, that's when we learned that we were in the shoreline and required this um, variance. But that is the issue that it becomes very unusable for the request of a manufactured home because of the two roads, that's the, that's the issue. There's no issue with putting a, a single wide on there? That's part of the application also. All right. To grant that permission. Yes. Are there other single wides within this area? There's actually a fair number of them. Um, the applicant could probably tell you better than I can. There looks appears to be one straight across the road. Um, would you guys like to address that portion? You, you can see one there on that corner of Rito and Town. There's yes, there's one. Yeah. Kitty, yep, Kitty Corner. Basically, the one to the north is sort of that type of structure. I'm sorry, to the south is that structure? Okay. Well, I didn't see anything out of the norm from the topographical. Okay, well, then the laws, there's no objections from anybody in it. I have no objection. I, I'd move to approve. Well, we still have to open a public comment. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay. I was just anything else you guys want to discuss or well I just wanted to say that it shows a single wide trailer. Yeah. And they're within the setback for that, right? Their deck is at the 30 foot. This drawing's a little hard to do. Yeah, I believe. Let me I just put the drawing back on. Um the only thing the only thing in question is setting the garage in the right before this. Trailers there. No, that's the, the mobile home is there. No, the garage is coming someday. That's not on here. Oh, you guys aren't addressing the garage at all. Okay, it's just oh. a mobile home. Mike's got a picture of a garage. What was that? I know it was well, says future proposed, but oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, it was highlighted. I thought that's what we're going after. No, no. The question is can the single wide mobile home be placed on there? And question number two is, can it go closer to the road than the required setback? So if you look at the drawing, the deck and the steps will be at that 30 foot setback from their front, from the road property line. Right. Um, on the Rito side, it is actually listed as 24 feet to that. And that is to maintain the 10 foot setback on the back side of the property. And Rito is the Rito is the wider road in this area. Homestead is one of those smaller. Um, and I'll add when you said about your maps, it was communicated to us the lot was 125 by 125 when we purchased it, and when it was surveyed, it's only 112 by 130, 12 feet that we were trying to. Maybe 
what she said was when they purchased it, they were told it was 125 by 125. And then they had it surveyed and found out it was actually 131 by 112. So it wasn't a square uh, they were led to believe. Okay. <clears throat> and Olmstead is a dead end road there. Um, I think it serves two more properties after yours. Is that correct? Correct. correct. And then Rito is a little bit more of a major road going through there. Which dead ends pretty much at the lake. <laughs> it lands at the lake. Right, and then it turns 90 degree turn into Market Street, so. Yes. So, yeah. I see in this drawing, this is a possibility of a 26, eight by 30, by 66 seasonal home. Right, so if they never chose to do that, they'd be back before this board because that would be a larger structure than what, yeah. I mean, you, you're only approving that setback for the, okay. for the single wide right now. If five years from now they say, well, we want to put it in the same spot or whatever, and, they, and if they don't meet the setbacks, they would be back before you. Okay. Should I open it to public comment? Uh, Robert, Robert, public comment, okay. Should I open it to public yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I was trying to get a perspective on this thing. All right, are there any members of the public wishing to speak in, uh, in favor of this request? Are there any members of the public wishing to speak in favor of this request? Hello? Yes, please state your name. You are limited to three minutes. My name is Debbie and I'm at town in Rito and I have no objections to this request. Thank you. Are there any mem other members of the F, um, public wishing to speak in favor of this request? Any other members of the public wishing to speak in favor of this request? Are there any members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to this request? Any members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to this request? Third time, any other members of, or any members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to this request? At this time, I would close the public comment. I would like a motion for, to approve or deny this request. I move to approve. Second. Do we have any further comments on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. The application was approved three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say just then to Denise too, thank you for helping prepare the information or getting us to get the right questions answered for you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have no correspondence. Our next meeting is December 4th. December 4th. Do we want to talk about moving? How? Set are you guys on first Monday? If we move it to say Thursday, how does Thursdays work for you guys? I told you before my application got turned down by Walmart. I'm open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boat, yeah, boat Thursday repair and slab business. Thursday. Sorry. You do? Yeah. Okay. Um, Wednesdays? Wednesday, I'm good. Early? I mean, well, same-ish time. We're, what I'm trying to do with Mondays, it puts out the publishing requirements a week earlier 
just the way it, it works out, being on a Monday and the papers published on Wednesday. So if I can get those two closer together. Does Wednesday help you? Wednesday's perfect because that's the publication date on the newspaper. That would be the first Wednesday of the month we yep. would do this. First Wednesday. So Unless you guys want to move it later in the month. I'm, I'm pretty flexible. Well, I'm flexible too, you know, because I could take my other shift, you know, and I just move it over here. So I'm free. So then it would be December 6th. Do yeah. so I just take shorter naps, Bob? Well, you know, it could be, yeah, true, true. We close, we close everything down, right? Yeah, you haven't adjourned yet, but so December 6th is our meeting. Okay. Okay. The day before Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Day after St. Nicholas. Yeah, 